Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you an alternative idea for all of those fishtail banners on the June 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, today I'm going to be sharing an alternative idea for the June 2020 sheet load of cards. I know that cutting all of these fishtails can get a little tedious, so I wanted to see if there was a way to recreate the layout but not have those fishtails. My plan is to use my We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper and just round one or maybe both of the bottom corners. This will require a little bit different dimensions when you cut, but as I'm working on the process, I will make sure to let you know about those. Now, if you do want the fishtails, don't forget that I did have a couple videos where in the first one I share how you could use a special punch to get all of those. And then I also shared with you about Sarah, one of my subscribers, who has shared SVG files if you have an electronic cutter. Both of those videos will be linked below if you want to check them out. Before I get started on the process, I wanted to share with you a little bit about the products that I'll be using today. Once I do start the process, I will go to a voiceover. So if I leave you with any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. I will of course be using the June 2020 sheet load of cards printable. I will also link the debut video in the description box below if you want to go download this for free for yourself. I already mentioned that I'll be using the corner chomper today. For my sentiments, this is going to look a little bit different than in the sketch too. I'm actually going to be stamping sentiments from this Gina K design stamp set and I'm just going to be cutting them out with these stitch circle dies. My sentiments will all be stamped in Versamark ink and heat embossed with silver detail embossing powder. For some bling on these cards, I'm going to try out my silver and clear glitter gems from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I know that in the debut video this month, I shared the gold version of these, and I thought today since the paper has some silver foil, these would look really nice on them. For the paper, I do have six card blanks off to the side, and those just come from my stash. I already have those pre-cut and scored. I also got out a scrap of white cardstock for my sentiments. For my card stocks from the sheet load today, I will actually be using vellum. This is, I believe, 26 or 24 pound. I'll have it linked in the description box below if you want to check it out. For my patterned papers today, I'll be using the Peaceful Breeze Hot Buy Pad from Michaels. I'm honestly not sure when this came out. I don't know if it was three months ago or three years ago, but I will tell you that it had never been opened, so this is my first time using it. I already pre-chose the papers. I have this big floral, and then I have one with some peachy dots and some little gray lines, and that matched the color of the flowers. And then I'll also be using this piece. It's kind of a gray wood grain background, and then there are sentiments gold foiled in there. Let's get crafty. Cutting the pattern papers is gonna be pretty much like the original. You're gonna cut it into the six pieces shown here, except in the end, you will not put the fishtail in the bottom of the one and a half inch wide strips. The first thing I'm gonna do here is cut a strip that's five and a half inches, and then I'm going to cut some pieces that are one and a half inches wide. And you'll notice that I am just using the one and a half inch mark to the left of my cut line and just sliding my paper down until I get there and that I wind up with four strips. I then take that five and a half inch tall piece and cut two pieces that are four and a quarter inches wide. And then for those strips, I cut two down to five inches tall and the other two down to four inches tall. And again, those are just the same dimensions as on the instructions. 
Now it's time to cut the vellum. These two pieces are represented by CS2 and CS3 on the cutting guide. They will still be one and three quarter inches wide, but the heights are gonna be different. CS2 would get cut to four and an eighth inch tall, and CS3 gets cut to five and an eighth inch tall. So what I did was cut each piece of vellum into two strips that were those four and an eighth inch and five and an eighth inch tall. And then I cut until I had six pieces of each that were one and three quarters inches wide. Since this vellum is thin, I did end up stacking the four and an eighth inch pieces and that helped with cutting a little bit quicker. And now we're gonna round those corners. I will be using the quarter inch side of my corner chomper and the vellum again, because it's thin, I did stack up three pieces of vellum. I made sure that they were nice and stacked together and then I put them down in that corner tightly and then I squeeze and that just gives a nice little corner there. Now you could always round both corners at the bottom, but I just kind of like the modern look of having only one of those rounded. On the pattern paper pieces, I punch two at a time, and you'll see here on some of those, I had to re-punch them. You gotta get that right in that corner really well, make sure that corner looks nice and round. The next step was to get the pattern paper pieces matted with that vellum. I just ran a couple strips of adhesive down each side of the pattern paper, and then I centered that on the vellum, but I aligned it at the top. And here is just a quick look at it next to one of the fishtail pieces of the same size. I continued this same process until all of those little pieces were matted with the vellum. Once that was all done, I then mixed and matched the pieces so I would have the three pieces all ready to go for each card. The stamp set that I chose for the sentiments had six different sentiments, so I thought that was pretty perfect since this month's sheet load yields six cards. I placed each of those onto my scrap of white cardstock, and every once in a while I got out that circle die just to make sure that I would have room to die cut that and space for more of the sentiments. Once those were all in place, it was time to get them inked up. But because most of these stamps are new, I did rub my fingertips over each one just to kind of take off that oil from the process or from the making of the stamps. This helps it hold the ink better. I ran my embossing buddy over the cardstock just to help the embossing powder stick where it should, and then I rubbed each of those stamps onto the cardstock. Now I probably should have went ahead and re-inked it and did another round, because you will see here that a couple of my sentiments didn't come through completely. I did redo those later off camera. Speaking of off camera, that is also how I did today's die cutting, but I wanted to show you what I use to hold my dies in place. I have this scotch blue removable tape, and this scrap actually came from the desk beside me. You can reuse that if you save it. It works super nice and it does not tear the paper at all. I was able to die cut all six circles still with that one piece of tape. Now it's time to get these cards put together. Today I'll be using top folding card bases and I'm gonna start by putting adhesive on the back of piece A. And this is gonna go on the card front and it fills that space completely. Next, I'm gonna take the longer banner and that gets adhered to the left edge of the card. I just love how you can still see some of that pattern paper through the vellum. For this first card, I do pretty much the same thing with the banner, just adhere it flat down, and then I'm gonna put a few pop dots on the back of my sentiment circle and place that on the card front. Just to show you something different you can do with the cards, I started putting this one together just like the first card. The longer banner again went down just like the first card as well. But for the second banner, I placed some pop dots on the back of this so it was raised up off the card front when I placed it down. Now because one side is raised, when I go to put the adhesive on my circle, I will need to make sure that the foam dot goes on one side and regular adhesive 
adhesive goes on the other so that it's nice and solid or straight across on the finished card. Before these cards are done, let's add some bling. I got out my glitter gems and there are different sizes on here. It starts out with the largest on the left going down to teeny tiny ones on the right. I chose a midway dot and I placed three on the bottom right of the sentiment circle. For the second card, since there was already some silver foil on the bottom right, I placed the glitter dots on the upper left of the circle this time. I just thought that helped add some sparkle to a different area of the card. I continued to add these until I had bling on all six of my cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made these alternatives using the June 2020 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.